I'm Master Gardner. I'm Ron Byerly. Uh, I grew up around a, a farm all my life and I also worked at Grantland Garden Center for approximately 25 years. This is Kim. My name is Kim Tate and I've been a Master Gardener for about four years and I'm originally from Michigan and moved here about seven years ago. And we're going to try to show you some different ways to start plants. Ron's going to start. Okay, the first thing you want to do is you want to make sure you get a good good type of soil. Don't get a soil that that is that has got fertilizer in it. Make sure it's just a good soil. I always stamp my soil. So when you dampen your soil, it's ready to go. You don't have to sit there and make sure that and this is what they call a four pack. And then this is a six pack, and then if you want to start something bigger, you can start something bigger. If you don't have these products, what I've learned over the years, save these. Are yogurt containers? No, they're egg. Well, yeah, or yogurt. Egg container or, or yogurt, either one. But don't get, don't waste your time on buying a, a, a soil that's already got fertilizer in it. Just buy your regular, just buy a good all-purpose soil with less of this stuff in it. When you're doing these, just flatten them out. And depending on what you're planting, uh, this is a zinnia. The zinnia is pretty, is uh, kind of small, but it's not real small, but it's, it's elongated. There's a good shot of what zinnias would look like. All you would do to a zinnia is make a little divot using your finger. Just drop one in each cell. You don't necessarily have to cover them up. You can. What I do normally is I just go ahead and barely cover them up because it, these th seeds aren't very just enough to keep them from getting blown out of the out of the pot when you water, and just level it off. And there's one way you do seeds. The other way would be you use a seeder. This has got notches on it, and it sows your your different size of seeds. You would put your seeds inside this, and then you grow it. Say you're doing this the same way. You would just fill the containers. I use this mostly for uh, tomatoes, stuff like that. It's real easy to do, just something easy you can do without having to. Okay. Then in your bigger seeds, your vining seeds. They're quite a bit bigger, as you know. So this is more like a bean. This is more like a bean, but it is fine. So I would probably start this in a pot like this. Same thing, same process. You would fill your, your pot, kind of tamp it down, but don't make it real tight. You don't want it, you want it kind of loose, but you don't want it real loose. Fill it all the way to the top, scrub it off, and then lightly do that, because that's the way your soil kind of sets down. On a vining type thing, I would probably put two seeds in this one. On a bean seed that's got a bigger, you, the, the code to kind of remember how deep you want to go is the depth of this should be the depth of your seed. So you want to go at least that far. Same, same process, you just take and put a little salt back over the top of it and you wet it down. This is what the, we get ours in. We always get ours in in what they call plugs. It's a plug tray that we get directly from a greenhouse. And what it is, is the plants is already done for you. So all you have to do, pull it out. Take and make a little divot. Take and separate your roots. And I can give you in, uh, places where you can pick these plants up if you want to pick these plants up from cutting. And you make sure you put it in, press it in a little bit. Do the same process. Make sure you take and tamp it down. To make sure it's tight. 
And all you do is make sure you're pulling at the base of the plant. Don't take and pull it by the top. Take and separate the roots again. Hop in, press it a little bit, get your soil back again. Make sure that root ball is covered up because anytime you've got a root ball exposed, it does what they call wicking. Wicking is where your water doesn't get down and it sets on the top or it takes and your plant sticking up out of the ground and it wicks the water off so it dries out quicker. Because this root ball goes all the way to the top. If you look at it, it goes all the way to the top. Just press it down. Here's your plant. Make sure you cover it pretty this. And the same thing goes with this. And these coalesces are probably about your easiest plant you can grow. I mean, they'll grow like weeds. Some varieties are what they call a shade variety. This is actually a partial sun to part shade. Now there is a real jagged variety that, that will, has to be all shade. I mean, it has to be all shade. There is a variety called King Kong, which the leaves get about this big around, and the plant they get about yay tall. That's why it's called King Kong. Uh, also remember, when you look at your packages, that if it says dwarf, make sure you go and look and see what the original plant height was supposed to be on that plant to begin with, because sometimes the dwarf plant can be three to four foot tall. Whereas your other ones could be six foot tall to nine foot tall, like the burning, the dwarf burning bush, which is in the Euonymus family, they get to 10 to 12 foot tall. So your dwarf burning bush is still gonna be three to four foot. So just remember that when you're, when you're selecting your plants, I would not recommend uh, kids start with petunias. I probably would not start with something like this. If you look at this, petunia seeds, they're like dust. There's a petunia seed. And when you're doing petunias, you definitely have to have a heat mat. Because petunias, pansies, and I think there's approximately three to four other plants that require heat mat because they got to stay 80 to 82 degrees for them to germinate. Anything else, pretty much anything else, uh, you can do real easy. Say I'm going to do, uh, uh, I'll show you what you would do if you've done it in your garden. If you want to just plant, say, in a, in a directly into a, your uh, bed, a raised bed, Say so you want to do lettuce or uh, any of the other things like that. You want to do flowers that don't require a whole bunch. That you want to start outside. Or you want to do squash. All you would do, say you're in the Gary Garden. You have your soil. It's like that. What you do is just make lines in, in your soil so many inches apart and then you drop your seed. Say you're gonna do beans, you drop your seed, and you just cover it up. That way you get, you get your proper seed, seed in, and stuff like that. Real easy to do. All right, I am gonna show you another way to start plants. There are some plants, some herbs, some bushes and things that it is easier to start by taking a cutting. Now, because it's winter, I can't really show you a lot of plants, but there's crepe myrtles, there's bluebird plants, there's so many different plants that you can take a cutting off of. And when you take a cutting, you get that actual plant. Like if you uh, have a, a tomato plant and you take the tomato and save the seeds, that's actually the next generation, so there can be a little bit of difference between your next year's plants and the ones you have. But cuttings, you get the, the plant that you get. So I'm going to show you a couple examples. This is a lemon verbena. It is a wonderful herb, but it is not an easy herb to seed out. So what I do is I take about four inches. Now, if you're taking a bush, you probably want to take six inches, but I take about four inches off of a new growth. You really want to make sure you take a new growth. That makes it a lot easier. And then, okay, so you have this. You want to take off the lower leaves 
and leave just a little bit of leaf. And if they're really big leaves, you actually want to pinch and take half of those leaves off. So you only have like half a leaf. These leaves are small. I'm going to leave the whole leaf. Again, just like Ron said, you want some potting soil and you want it to be moistened already so you don't have to worry about the first kind of uh, watering. And you make whatever hole you want to make. Um, you can either put it straight in, or, and I forgot to bring my um, hormone, you can dip into, in it into a hormone to, thing to also help start the roots. Root tone. Pardon? Root tone. Root tone, yeah, is another name. And you, so you just stick it in and you I, I just kind of tighten it up so that the soil is against the root, just like that. Okay, and I do this both ways. I um, just have them here. I might have a tray underneath so that I water underneath them. I also put them in a clear plastic uh, bag, like a twist tie bag, and that kind of gives you a terrarium effect, which can also help them grow better. So that's the lemon verbena. This is a jade plant. It's a succulent. It's an indoor plant. This is one of the easiest ones to start from cuttings. And I'm going to show you that this one has just a little bit of a starter right here. And I just cut it right next to this main branch like this. Okay, so I've got a cutting. And actually with jades, a lot of times the roots are turn or the branches are like bent. It really doesn't matter. I just pull off some of the bottom leaves, give you a little plant, probably pull off at least one more. Okay, same thing. I stick this into a hole and because this is plant uh, sideways, I kind of make the hole wider and I put, just put it in just like that now, and that's ready to go to now and it, they're a little flat fragile the jades are so you don't want to bop them around a lot but they will set and um, grow out this is actually cutting that I got off of my bigger plant and this is about three years old so these are cuttings that I've done it's actually two in there um, I wanted to show you too this uh, coleus that um, Ron was using these plugs you can even take from these plugs because a lot of times these kind of plants you actually do want to pinch off the top so they get bushier so this is just another use for that what you pinch off I um, I'm going to pinch off one again because this is a smaller plant I'm not pinching off four inches but I pinched off maybe about two inches I'm going to take off these lower leaves and I'm going to plant this like this and and I wanted to show you okay so like a bigger leaf you would want to cut this in half now you can use a scissor but sometimes I just use my fingers it depends on what kind of uh, leaf it is if it's a strong leaf you'll want to use a scissor or something so there's the plant and again we put it into moistened soil stick it down in and then kind of squeeze the soil around it just to make sure it's all touching and that will start another plant you want to keep it slightly moist but not real wet. I like to underwater them, or if you moisten the soil and again put it in a plastic bag, it does a terrarium effect and you don't have to worry about it um, getting too dry. Uh, I want to thank you all for uh, watching us as we uh, show you how to start seeds and how to start your plants. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, just contact uh, Master Gardeners, or Harrison you can County. contact the Harrison County Master Gardeners or you can contact us individually. Uh, me and Patty's both on the 4-H list. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your time. Hope you enjoyed it. Learned something. <laughs>